track, pick a time Any day is fine, pack a bag, say you do Let's sail off me and you on another adventure We are in it now, and cruiser priority numeral uno is ground tackle But how do you design an adequate ultralight anchoring system for a machine like this? First you put together your brand new mantis And then you're off to the drawing board to brainstorm ideas we were focused on keeping the weight of the ground tackle in the center of the ship for obvious performance purposes, so we settled on a suspended floating roller system attached by Dyneema going to lashings and pad eyes mounted on the deck. Let's look at a better angle. We built off of a basic roller system available in most marine stores, both lightweight and sturdy. Here you see the Dyneema coming from the deck and attaching to a fixed shiv-like point, secured with bolts to an upper structure to keep the outward pressure from making the whole kit and caboodle go boom! As you can see, the original flat top idea didn't work. We're gonna need at least four and a half inches to fit this mantis into our roller, so we adapted and added supports to strengthen the angles. Well, we had our friend fabricate us this uh, reinforcement top piece here for our anchor roller design. And now we're gonna cut some sheaths to put in between here. So how big of a shiv are we going to need to make, Holly? If I use this um, one and a quarter hole saw, will give us a shiv. Two shivs will have about three eighths between the shivs, which is this much. So it all depends on how big of a line we end up using, which you're probably going to use maybe like three eighths half inch line. So it's going to be a little tight. What do you, you like it tight? what do you think? Oh yeah, we should make it tight, snug as a bug. In a row. Mhm. Mm I'm making chicken cages. You're making what? Chicken, chicken cages? cages. Cage For what? Singular. For what? For chickens. So what you got there? Ice cubes. <laughs> Play the game. Don't break the ice. Chicken corners. Use this sheet and we'll get my shoes together. Here we go. Cut a 90 degree angle in half with paper. Why? Because I need a 45 degree angle. Oh. Because. This is trigonometry with Holly. <laughs> Woo! 45, 90. 45, 90. That's what the clock is up. I am making. Sheaves, starboard, polymer, that lasts a lifetime, but it melts. Slow is pro. Drill a little bit, let the blade cool. Drill a little bit more, let the blade cool. They came out great, then we used a little sandpaper and a marker to give them a beveled edge for the line. Measured for bolt size and started Dyneema splicing. So we got sheaves made to hold. Man, this is coming out our so... Dyneema loops and we're gonna... Ducking nice. Suspend our anchor roller out. It's gonna be wild. Where's the other oh, side? Give me the tip. Just the tip. We're going into the beyond. The beyond is best entered foot first. Here we go. Into the beyond. Center board's gonna go away. We're going up in there. All right. Up in there, and then we're gonna go that way. First. take a left and you would think you wouldn't fit through this hole but you actually do here we go so this is how this works Ta -da. Take it this way 
with me. And as we go forward, the next hole where we're gonna find a hole. Boom. It was just, I had to turn off my light. And we're not tapping into any coring right here, so that's good. We didn't do any of that. Nice, I like it. And I'm gonna go back this way. Ta da! And we get to go down. Unfold the legs down. Back into the great outdoors main cabin. It's busy in here. It's got a little bit of a water world kind of vibe, doesn't it? It's like stuff hanging everywhere and things. <laughs> After several trips back in and out of this hole, strategically shaping the starboard backing plates, it was time to drill some oversized bolt holes. So why would you drill a hole just to fill it up? Well, because there's some coring in here, and if we just drill a hole and then put a bolt through it, if any moisture gets in there, it's going to get in our coring, and it's going to run wherever it wants, and it's going to ruin things, and we won't see them until it's entirely too big. So we drilled a hole that was too big, and then we're going to fill it up, seal off all this coring on the inside there. On top of structure and sealing coring, this also helps isolate the carbon fiber from the stainless, as carbon is very conductive. Redrill to the correct size and install with the appropriate sealant. There's a thin fiberglass layer under the pad eye as well. We're designing the world's most cutting edge anchor pulpit. Oh yeah, oh, less three feet. Four inches there from the depends where you measure from, but 3.9 was going to take us all the way to the point, so we definitely want to stay shorter than that. 3.5? Yeah, 3.4 I think. Is. After measurements, we spliced in the thimbles and lashed them to the D-rings. We were feeling pretty proud of our accomplishments, and we're going to come back to some of the struggles we experienced with the bridle, as well as the windlass fabrication and install. But for now, let's wrestle up some really, 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 really big sails. Do a proper rig inspection and get this puppy out of the harbor for the first time in over six months. There's Holly. Where the hell up there? Hey, James. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go, Holly. You scared? Oh, you scared? A little bit. <laughs> I've been on plenty of sailboats, but nothing like this. We take Tritium out for the first time on an excessively light wind day for a few reasons. No one has ever walked us through this boat. No one that has ever ran this boat prior has been on board to show us anything. So we are figuring this all out from scratch. And after many years of sailing, we have a lot of the basics figured out, but this is a very different boat. In addition to the fact that she has been sitting neglected for six months. This is just a good exercise to move the parts and learn a little more, as well as test some of the stuff on Tritium and see what else needs repaired. We needed to put that jib line in that so we could have it further out. We're figuring this out as we go. It's super light today. We got Captain Cup at the helm here. Huh? Wind speed? Oh, easily, yeah. I think there's only like five knots of breeze. We got a little purple reef main. It's not very little, it's still big. Playing with the how to really get it tight, figuring out some of that stuff. <laughs> go, Holly, go! <laughs> how about this thing for a deck sweeper? After a successful day of twisting knobs and pulling levers, learning a few things, and mostly acquiring more questions, the anchor system rode really nicely and we were ready to head back into the harbor. Going places! Woo! 
super huge shout out to Kevin at Subsea Tours, whale watching and kayak rentals. If you're going to Morro Bay, check out this guy's place because he was so helpful for us when we were there. When Kevin first saw us in the harbor, he exclaimed, Are you the YouTube girl that got ran over? And unfortunately, he was not wrong. But there was good news. After my accident, I decided to be the change I wanted to see in the world. With eight years of cruising under my belt and constantly struggling to find a dinghy light under a hundred bucks that would even last an entire season, I designed an affordable, durable, non-battery consuming solution. So please do not learn the hard way like I did. If you're out there running around on a dinghy, kayak, or paddleboard at night, please send an email to showmeyourdinghy at gmail.com for more information. Would you do this? with your dinghy light. There she goes. Ho, oh, oh, ho, I got a bite. I caught something. What is it? Oh man, look at that guys. Today, we caught safety. All right, golly George, look at that. Beautiful. So remember, when you go out at night, take a light and show me your dinghy, because lights save lives. And back to your regularly scheduled program. saying was that even if we were in the Caribbean and it was 85 degrees we'd still be like in a boat we can't afford with a plan we don't have and like there's still in the huge ocean out there and the only difference is, is that's the biggest ocean in the whole world yes. and, and, we got seals. and there's seals and there's otters to look at like I've seen a lot of sea turtles we seal the deal you otter see it And we're gonna go see the dunes. And there's a surf spot on the other side of the dunes that uh, no, not too many people go to. We're going um, to see some dunes. No, it's starting to rain. We might not go see dunes. Yeah. We ended up trying the dunes adventure on a less wet rainy day this awesomeness. There's a trampoline out here in the middle of the dunes of nowhere. <laughs> Come jump with me. Jump with me. Jump with me. <laughs> Can't make too much time for playing with all the work to be done. Securing our wire ends. You know, you should have seen this this mess, but we're not going to talk about it. We're just going to move forward. All wires are a mess. So, on this boat. well, just the way they were attached. Just like yeah, everything. So dangles. we got our little zip tie anchors, and we're going to glue them down there. The adhesive they come with doesn't really stick and bond well, so we're going to try out some West System G Flex thickened epoxy which is epoxy design G flex it's an epoxy designed uh, for bonding plastics in mine um, but it's really hard to get epoxy to bond to plastic so you got to do a lot of prep work you got to sand everything down uh, we flame treat it where you uh, run a blowtorch off the surface and uh, proper acetone and then degreasing of the surfaces. Join us next time as we cut a really big hole in the boat, talk about some vacuum bagging, go on a few more adventures, and what the duck is up with this clucking chicken cage talk. Jump on in, grab a line, the water's feeling fine, catch a fish, maybe two, let's sail off me and you on another adventure